Hey, it's Brad and today I'm doing something a little bit different. Normally I do a lot of comedy and just make funny wacky videos, uh, but today I'm going to talk about something a little more serious. Uh, a few years ago I was involved in a near-death experience, uh, which was a skydiving accident. So on the 31st of August in 2013, I essentially free fell skydiving after two parachute malfunctions from 15,000 feet at 80 kilometers an hour and I survived. I was left with a broken spine and torn ligaments in my neck as well as, well as a whole bunch of bruising, scratches and a lot of mental health issues afterwards. I remember the day really clearly and being on the edge of the plane strapped my tandem instructor ready to go and He's got the GoPro strapped to him, he's all set, and he says to me, while pointing the GoPro at me, do you have any last words? And I said, yep, I hope my parachute opens. Without a word of a lie, that's what I actually said. So the first six or seven seconds of free fall is totally euphoric. You actually feel like you're just this weightless piece of paper, and it's just an amazing feeling. There's just this rush of air, and you're full of adrenaline, it's amazing and he goes to pull the first parachute and I'm expecting this massive thrust because we're meant to slow down as we reach the ground but we only thrust a little bit and we're still going really really fast and I know the parachute is out behind me so I look up and I notice the parachute hasn't opened it hasn't caught any air it's not slowing us down it's just flailing in the wind so I start freaking out I'm terrified I know that the ground is coming closer and closer uh, we begin to shake violently literally shake out of control like we're in a washing machine we're just tumbling and i'm nearly falling out of my harness which is strapped around my waist i had a shoe fall off he keeps telling me to keep my feet down so i don't fall out of the harness eventually he's grabbing above me and it looks like he's trying to cut the parachute free or he's trying to release a second parachute an emergency parachute comes out but that one gets caught with the first one so we've got two parachutes that are connected and tangled and none of them are opening at this stage I know that there's only two parachutes with us and we're still going towards the ground we haven't slowed down and the ground is coming closer and closer we still are shaking so violently and I know that death is coming hundred percent it's a certainty that I'm gonna hit the ground and I'm going to die so I asked Bill our tandem instructor I said are we gonna die and he says I don't know I just remember the first feeling, the first emotion was guilt because I would brought my whole family there. We had made a day out of it. My mum, my dad, my three sisters, their husbands, my nieces and nephews, everyone had come to watch me. And I just remember feeling complete and utter guilt because I would brought them there to watch me die. I took responsibility of what I had done and I was accountable for the trauma they were going to experience. And I knew any second I was going to hit that ground and it was going to hurt. It was going to be the, the, the most ridiculous amount of pain that one person could ever go through. I was going 80 kilometers an hour from 15,000 feet about to hit the ground and I just saw my family. I saw them watching me and I didn't want them to watch me because I knew that they were going to, they were going to watch me die and I just felt really bad because I didn't I didn't want them to see that. I didn't want to put that burden on them, but I had no choice. I, I saw death right in front of me and it was coming. And when I hit the ground, I just remember this unimaginable searing pain shooting up my spine and we ricocheted from the ground into a lake. So we're submerged underwater. We've got the canopy of the parachute above us. I'm still harnessed and strapped to Bill eventually we are found by some golfers because we landed on a golf course and an ambulance come and I remember getting hoisted into the ambulance. My family had come bounding over running kilometers from the airport to the golf course where I landed and I saw my sister and I saw my mum and they had run to come see if I was okay and they were crying and I was just getting lifted into the ambulance and I just remember hearing my mum <laughs> tell me I was going to be okay. <laughs> I, just think, I just kept saying sorry because I felt so bad I didn't want her to see me like that and my sister Jess kept telling me I was going to be okay and I just I felt so sorry for them I didn't want them to see that because they thought I was dying and they saw me fall from that height and they were certain that I was going to die and they're traumatised as well <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
the next four or five months was just the most intense period of my life I've ever had. I locked myself in my room. I was on morphine, I was on endone, all these strong painkillers. I had a neck brace on and a back brace on. I couldn't drive, I couldn't leave the house, I didn't have friends over, I yelled at my parents, I yelled at my nieces and nephews, I locked myself in my room with the curtains closed and the door closed and I didn't even know what time of day it was, I didn't socialise, I just sat there and hated myself for the longest time and I was just so terrified of the outside world for, for what felt like forever. And I started doing therapy, I was forced to do therapy, convinced to do therapy and that's when I was told I had high levels of anxiety, I was suffering from depression and I had post-traumatic stress disorder which I'd never even barely heard of yet alone experienced anything even slightly like that. Having PTSD is something that's still with me but it was just so intense after the accident. I remember having such extreme night terrors where I would be closing my eyes and I'd feel myself falling, I'd be reliving it again and again and again in such specific detail like it was the real thing. It was just an immersive flashback and mum would have to burst into my room because I'd be inconsolable, I'd be crying, I'd be grabbing things, throwing them at the wall and she'd have to physically restrain me because I was in such hysterics. And that lasted for months and months and months and I still get night terrors and I still have depressive episodes and I still get highly anxious. Having PTSD leaves me, leaves me on such a high alertness and I'm easily terrified, I'm easily withdrawn, I'm triggered every single day, multiple times a day and the accident hasn't left me four years later. These days life is completely different, it's been four years since the accident and I can safely say that I'm thriving. What you need to do now is Embrace the person that you are. You need to chase your dreams. Don't sit there and wait for it to happen because it's not going to happen. I could have died and I could have died knowing that there was more to my life and now I need to achieve as much as I can in the little amount of time that I have. Don't waste any time. Follow your dreams right now. And if you are going through mental health issues, I implore you to open up and speak to someone. It is so hard. It's very difficult. Rome wasn't built in a day. You're not going to open up to people and be honest and candid overnight, but I strongly encourage you if you are suffering talk to someone please don't end it because you have so much potential so much life to give and just your very mere presence might make someone's day someone's month someone's year someone's life so realize how special you are and the amount of impact you can have on someone else so if you are suffering please 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 open up and seek help and if you need someone to talk to i'm always here thank you so much